Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Hell Vape Destiny. Done by Alex Vapors MD and Hell Vape. Single coil RTA, supposed to be one of the best flavored ones out there. Well, let's take a look at it and come to find out what it's really capable of doing. All right. Get the package opened up. And take a look. 1922 on the side. We have a stainless steel one. Invoke your vaping genius. Yeah? Well, let's take a look and see what kind of vaping genius we have. If we can get the box open. Isn't that just something? There we go. Autumn airflow. Beautiful knurling. Destiny. Bayonet top fill. Beautiful wide open juice fill ports. And the machining on this is just fantastic. Yeah. 810 drip tip on it. Let's see what the build deck looks like. Interesting. Side airflow. Both sides. All right. What else is in the box? Bubble glass. Fantastic. Very good. Also inside the packaging. We have a little flathead screwdriver, a bunch of little O-rings, a 10 to 510 adapter, And we have a coil and aggulated cotton. So, well, might as well just jump into it, get this bubble glass popped on here, if this is going to cooperate. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a lot better. No question about it. So, let's grab a build stand. the screwdriver they provided because the one that I got ready for this unfortunately is just a little too big so let's take a look at their little screwdriver see how good it is Very good. Take a look at the coil and the cotton that's provided. Let's 
That's a three millimeter wrap on the coil that comes with it. I'll put a little bend in there. Sometimes a little bit of preparation makes it a lot easier to get these built. Take a look at it, make sure it's going to match where we need to go. And get our snips out. And notice that you want to have this centered in there so we can literally use the tank the way that it's set up to determine where we're going to make our leads same way we do for cotton we can do for the coil itself slide that in there And we want our coil to be centered. Not too shabby. Make sure these are tight. I'm going to throw this on the Aegis Max. And 0 0.25. Looks good. Okay, now that we got the cotton or the coil cooled off, let's get it all wicked up. Oh, look at that. Get all these strands go in the same direction. Then we need our shears. And we're going to trim her down.
have to give this cotton a little haircut. Let's try and get this down into this hole. Just a little tweezing, a little coaxing, and we can get her wicked. As long as these are parallel in there. Just want to make sure it's not stuffed inside this channel. Just a little coaxing. If it gets too stuffed in here and too much cotton, you are going to choke out the juice flow control. That's a good reason to always rake out your cotton. And you can always tweeze it and pluck it and play with it a little bit because we don't want it all the way down in here. You can always go in from behind and tuck it up a little if you need to. Just like there we go. Now we'll do the same to the other side. Trim it down. See how she looks, a little long. Come back in. Give her a little trim. And it's still a little bit long, so. Just trim it down and then start getting the backside threads to just fall into place. And as you work your way down, the rest of this should just fall into place into that slot. And if you move it back and forth, the strands will help straighten themselves out. And if you need to give a little encouragement, then feel free to. But when you start working on these much smaller tanks, your cotton length starts to really matter. And if you take a look, some of these are just a little bit too long. So we'll pull it out, give it a little bit of a rake to get rid of our longer strands. And just another little trim. It pays to spend a little bit more time to make sure that your wicking is correct. That way you won't ever flood your deck out and you won't ever get a dry hit. Just a little tweezing and plucking. And look at that, it's just falling in now. just pull up on it you can literally see it just barely touching the deck same on this side verify that it's filled the slot and just barely touching the deck all right now we'll get some juice on here Couple short pulses. And we have vapor production. How's that look? Not too shabby. Let's juice her up. Lots of room on the top of this to fill up the tank. Very, very nice.
we have our little bayonet top cap just a little quarter turn and it's time for us to find out how this tank performs omen up 0 0.25 ohms and we're gonna try it out at 40 watts for our initial hit don't forget to purge the first time you do this especially when you fill the tank up you're going to create pressure inside this tank and in addition to the juice you already loaded the deck up with make sure you purge your tank nice I have the airflow wide open on this thing and it's got a little bit of a restriction to it. But the vapor production is amazing with the coil that they provided. If you've been following my channel, you know I'm a salty man, purple rain guy. That stack over this shoulder going up that wall, those are all empty boxes of my purple rain. So I definitely know how it tastes. And let me tell you, I've never experienced flavor from a tank like this one. Yeah, that's amazing. The coils that are in this tank, the airflow combination that's on this tank, it's bringing out notes in this juice that I've never tasted before. I can hear there's a little turbulence in the airflow. But I don't feel any. All I'm getting is pure flavor. That is really a remarkable experience. From a single coil tank. On the Aegeus Max, I've been using a dual coil build running at 85 watts. I get about 375 puffs out of a battery before I have to change it. This one, I've only got running at 40 watts. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. We'll see how she does. <sighs> 45 watts. Still a really cool vape. Let's go up to 50. A little bit of crackling going on. It's unbelievable the vapor this tank is making. Go to 55. Wow. Well, I'm gonna go use this for a while and I'll be right back.
I'm having a hell of a time trying to figure out what wattage to vape this thing at. If I turn the wattage up, really a lot of flavor, decent warmth, lots of unbelievable flavors that I haven't experienced before, but the airflow is whistly. It just got me all discombobulated. I don't know what to do here. Here, let me show you something. These are all the different drip tips I've tried on this tank. And this is the one that seems to be the best. I got an Altum drip tip using the 510 adapter on here. This came from Steam Craver, Vermiser Supreme V2. But listen. Okay, so now I got that one at like 48 watts, 49 watts. Here is an El Cheapo tank. Smooth as a porn star's ass, as Riv Prippers would say. Beautiful, quiet, flavorful, warm. I got this one. I tried this drip tip. I tried this one. This one feels great in the mouth, but it makes it even more whistly. I just don't know what to do. I mean, here's the one that comes with it. Okay. Very whistly, very turbulent. It doesn't feel turbulent on the inhale, but it's just weird. I don't know how else to put it. Another good drip tip. Another good drip tip. I, I, I just don't know. This is the one that came with it. Listen. Nice crackly tank. Great flavor. But just something about it I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know what to make of this tank. I've gone through several fillings of juice. I just don't know what to do. How do I rate this thing? I mean, right from the very first vape, I got an unbelievable flavor profile out of this tank. The coils that came with it, the cotton that came with it. Yeah, I understand that, you know, when I pulled it through, it, it separated, but that's just the luck of the draw when you got aggregated cotton. I'm enjoying it. I like the fact that, you know, I can put it on the Aegis and I know I'll be able to take it and be gone all day with it. But the turbulence of the airflow, they're just... I don't even know how to put it. So, how do I rate it? Flavor is great on this. I love the design. It's a very, very nice tank. I like the knurling. I like the airflow. But the airflow is turbulent and whistly. I'm just not sure how to rate this one. Would I recommend this to my friends? Probably not. I mean, there are so many good features about this tank, but the airflow is just, 
I guess turbulent is the best way I can say it. There's a reason why if you look at the drip tip that came with it, it's a funnel. It's 810. It's an 810 drip tip, but it's got 510 airflow. What? I don't understand. The drip tip I'm using right now is using the adapter to take it down to a 510. And this 510 Altum drip tip, I think is the best one for it. This tank retails for 40 bucks. And because it's been out all year, you could probably pick it up for 30. 32, maybe? I think I saw it on Element. But... I literally had to try all of these different drip tip options before I found something that was pretty good. I hate to take and give a bad review to a tank because the tank itself is great. It's really easy to, to, to build on. It's really easy to wick. I really wasn't too careful about it. You know, I mean, there's some people that gingerly floof the cotton into the channels. I mean, I did everything short of shoving the cotton down in there. And I'm not getting any dry hits. I'm not getting any leakage. But I don't know. I just don't know. This is one of those ones I guess you're just going to have to try it out for yourself. I know there's plenty of people out there looking at the forums and looking at product reviews from different websites that sell this. There are plenty of people that take this and they go, man, that's my new all-day device. I'm just going to go run around with it forever because it's like, it's better than the Kelpie, it's better than this, it's better than that. But I don't know. I've got this tank here. I just finished doing the review on it and listen to it. Let me get close so you can really hear it. It's crackly, it's buttery smooth, and it's quiet. And then there's this tank. Do you hear that? It's an oddball. I don't know. There's a TFV9. It's not a quiet tank. Listen. But there's no turbulence with it. This one, it's restrictive, which is a good thing, can be, but it doesn't have buttery smooth airflow. I don't know. I really don't know what to make of this one. You know, I got into this because I'd like to review and compare different devices and be able to give recommendations to people, you know? I've got my friends, you know, watch this stuff and watch my reviews and I'm, I can't recommend that you get this. I'll let you borrow it and you can try it. See if you like it. It might be the perfect tank for you. But it isn't for me. No. Despite the fact that it is beautiful. That's a beautiful tank. The airflow is wide open. I found a drip tip that I like with it, and it looks really good. Look at that on the Aegis. But... I, I don't know. 
I just cannot recommend it to my friends because the airflow is so turbulent. So, flavor rating on this one, it's definitely an eight. If anything, this thing can produce so much vapor that it almost tastes like you're drinking your juice. Especially if you do to turn down the tank. Here, this is halfway. When I turn the tank down halfway, the turbulence settles down. It's still there, but because of the restriction that I added on the bottom of the tank, I don't know. I hate to say it this way, because an I don't know is not an answer you want to see in a vape review. Is the tank gorgeous? Sure. Is it drop dead easy to put your coil in? Oh yeah, especially when you pre-bend your leads. It just fall, it just falls into place. Tighten your screws down, throw some cotton in it, and as long as you don't like stuff the holes full, it'll wick, no problems. I changed the wick on this, I changed the cotton on this. I figured, you know, maybe my coil wasn't centered properly or... I tried to come up with a reason why the airflow is so turbulent on this. And I couldn't find one. The coils were perfectly centered. I shoved the cotton in there the second time around, figuring, okay, well, maybe I'll definitely get a dry hit off of this. But it can keep up with the juice. And even cranking it way up. Here's 70 watts. That's what the airflow half open. Now, if I open up the airflow, I'll get even more vapor. But the airflow is more turbulent. It's not hot. It's a very warm vape. But it's just different. Do I like it? Yeah. Is it something I'm going to keep around so that I can maximize the battery life on my device? Probably not. So, unfortunately, I hate to say this. But that's my review on it. Beautiful tank. 9 out of 10 for aesthetics, 8 out of 10 for flavor, with the turbulent airflow. Nah. Uh, I don't think so. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this review. I know it kind of turned into a comedy there for a little bit, but uh, I just can't figure this tank out. I wicked it. It wicks fine. It vapes fine. Makes ton of vapor. I can vape it at 10 watts and it's producing good quality vapor. Very cool vape. Throw it into 30 watts. Nice. 45 watts. Kind of the ideal spot for this thing with the single coil that came with it. I can turn it all the way up to 70 watts and not get a dry hit. But the airflow just needs some more work. Go back to the drawing board and figure out how to smooth out this airflow. <sighs> Because you get a $40 tank. And I know you love the idea of a single coil. But you have the tank that everybody trashed. <sighs> 75 watts. Buttery smooth airflow. That's it for me. Hope you have a great day.